In the following lecture, we're going to try and predict uh, the redox reaction between 10 SN plus I2 excess. I2 would be in aqueous state uh, and 10 is solid metal. Uh, this is a tricky type of question because it leads to a chain reaction where the products would also react. So uh, we're going to see how this reaction, this chain reaction could be written and predicted uh, using electrode potentials. Now we'll start with step one. Step one is you need to uh, identify the reactants that are involved over here. It's pretty simple that uh, there's only tin and there's only iodine. There are no ions involved. So it's just SN and I2. So those are my two reactants, tin and I2, nothing else. Step two now is that uh, we need to we need to write down all electrode reactions that involve tin and I iodine. And for that, I need to open the data booklet where all the electrode reactions are given. I also need to write down the electrode potentials of those particular reactions. So here I have opened the data booklet where all the electrode potentials and uh, the electrode reactions are given. So I have tin as a reactant. So I'm going to search for uh, electrode reactions where tin is involved. There's one over here uh, where tin is involved. Uh, it's, it's in equilibrium with tin getting converted to tin 2 plus and vice versa tin 2 plus getting converted to tin and the E naught or electrode potential for that particular reaction is given as minus 0.14 volts. Uh, there's no other reaction where only tin is involved. There's tin 2 plus ions involved. There's tin 4 plus ions involved. But uh, there's only one reaction where only tin is involved. Now I'm going to search for iodine I2 and if you if you search the electrode reactions there's one reaction where i2 is involved getting converted to 2i minus 1 by gaining electrons and vice versa the electrode potential is given as 0 0.54 volts so i'm going to i'm going to mark this electrode as well because it contains i2 and there are no other electrodes in the data booklet where iodine is involved so i just figured out two electrode reactions and i'm going to copy those two electrode reactions so I've written down these two electrode uh, reactions. One which had uh, which involved tin. We had tin as one of our reactants. The other reaction involves iodine because we had iodine as our other reactant. We now move to step three, which is uh, that higher potentials they have a higher tendency to gain electrons. So higher E naught value is going to gain electron, and lower potential always loses electrons or it produces electrons. It's going to get oxidized. So I have two electrode reactions. Uh, so the higher potential is the one that's going to gain electrons. And in this case, it's the it's the iodine electrode that's the one that's going to gain electrons. So for it to gain electrons, it must go in the forward direction because the reaction in the forward direction is the one that's gaining electrons. So this is your higher potential. And lower E0 value or lower potential is the one that loses electrons. So in this case, it's going to be 10 that would be losing electrons to form tin 2 plus ions. Now once I've figured out which substance is getting reduced and which substance is getting oxidized, I need to write the overall equation. So we move to step 4 now. Now to write the overall uh, reaction, the first thing is we need to balance the number of electrons gained and the number of electrons lost, which in this case is not an issue because iodine is gaining 2 electrons. Whereas 10 on the other hand is losing 2 electrons. So the number of electrons gained and lost are already equal. The next step is that I need to add the reactants and the products to get an overall uh, equation. The reactants uh, are 10. In the first reaction the reactant is 10. Remember it's going in the backward direction. So 10 is your reactant. And in the second reaction it's iodine that's the reactant because the reaction is going in the forward direction. So, so we're going to add 10 and iodine so it's SN plus I2 and the products of both reactions are in the first reaction the product is coming out to be tin 2 plus and in the second reaction the product is 2I minus 1 so it's uh, tin 2 plus and the other product is 2I minus 1 the two electrons being gained and the two electrons being lost are automatically going to be cancelled out so this here is my overall equation for this reaction and I can now move on and calculate the E0 cell for this particular reaction and the way E0 cell is calculated is by taking uh, the, the higher potential and subtracting the lower potential from it so, 
So just, uh, just the way potential differences are calculated between the two electrodes are going to be, it's going to be higher potential minus lower potential or 0 0.54 minus minus 0 0.54 volts. So we're going to calculate the difference. It's going to be 0 0.54 minus minus 0.14 volt. And this would get added up. The value that I'm going to get for this E0 cell is going to come out to be equal to it's going to come out to be equal to 0 0.68 volts. So that's the overall E0 cell for the reaction. And this gives me an idea of how fast the reaction is going to take place. Now, uh, the final thing is, it seems that this reaction is now complete. That tin is reacting with iodine and it's producing tin 2 plus and 2i minus 1. And we also, uh, initially the question also stated that... Uh, this I2 was in excess, which means that there is still leftover iodine, but all the tin got converted to tin 2 plus. Now, uh, the problem with this question is that it's still not yet complete. The reaction is not complete because you have iodine, which is in excess. So you have some leftover iodine and one of your products is tin 2 plus. So tin 2 plus is the product of this reaction that happened over here when iodine reacted with tin and tin 2 plus was the product. Now this tin 2 plus, there are, there's a chance that this tin 2 plus might react with the excess iodine that's still left in the solution. So we're going to repeat all the previous steps and now we're going to try and figure out this second reaction which might occur after this first reaction has taken place. The leftover iodine, the excess iodine that was present at the start of the reaction might react with our product of the previous reaction which was 10 2 plus. So we're going to start the entire process all over again. So starting all over again, starting with step one, we need to identify the reactants, which is easy in this case. You just have iodine and tin 2 plus, so these are the only substances present. So uh, there's going to be a possibility of a reaction between iodine and tin 2 plus. These are my reactants. Step two now is we need to write down all the electrode re reactions involving these reactants. Uh, so we need to figure out uh, all electrode reactions that involve tin 2 plus. We need to write the electrode reactions as well as the E naught of those electrodes. So my two reactants are iodine and tin 2 plus. So I'm going to open the data booklet and see all the electrodes and write down all the electrodes that involve either I2 or tin 2 plus. Now for iodine, uh, there's still uh, the old reaction, the old electrode reaction. That's the only one that, that has iodine in it. Iodine gaining two electrons to form two I minus one and vice versa, a reversible reaction having an electrode potential of 0.54 volts. So we have marked that. We're going to use that electrode for iodine. And for SN2+, plus, uh, I have two electrodes now. Uh, one is this one over here that I have marked already. It's SN2+, plus gaining two electrons to form SN and vice versa, having an electrode potential of minus 0.14 volts. The other one is uh, tin 2 plus changing into tin 4 plus or tin 4 plus gaining electrons and changing into tin 2 plus. So I'm going to mark uh, this electrode as well. So for tin 2 plus, uh, tin 2 plus is involved in two electrodes uh, in this data booklet. So I'm going to copy all these reactions now. So here I have copied all the electrodes involving iodine and tin 2 plus. Uh, one where tin 2 plus is getting reduced to form tin. In the other one, tin 2 plus is changing into tin 4 plus, getting oxidized. Uh, the electrode potentials are also given and the third one is iodine get, gaining electrons to form I minus one and vice versa. So, so I have three electrodes that involve iodine or have something to do with tin 2 plus and I'm now going to move to step three. Now step three simply is that uh, the higher potential is the one that's going to gain electron or it's going to get, get oxidized and the lower potential is the one that loses electrons and gets oxidized. The higher potential gains electrons and gets reduced. So I need to figure out which of the three electrodes is, has the highest potential. That's the one that's going to be gaining electron, which has the lowest potential. That's the one that's going to be losing electrons. So starting with the higher potential, if you look at the three potentials over here, uh, you would notice that uh, this last one has the highest potential out of the three. So this is the one, this is the electrode that would be gaining electrons. So it's going to go in the forward direction because to gain electrons, 
the equation must be in the forward direction. I2 should be gaining electrons to form 2I minus 1. You should also need to realize that uh, the reactants that are in this reaction must be your reactants. So I2 is the one that's gaining electrons and we do have I2 in our, in our reactants. Our reactants, uh, they contain I2. So this reaction fits perfectly. So this is our reduction reaction. This is the reaction that is gaining electrons. Secondly, we're now go going to move to the other end, which is the lower potential loses electrons or gets oxidized. So I need to figure out which electrode out of the three. Uh, let's ignore this third one because we've already figured out that that is getting reduced. That's the one that's gaining electrons. So out of these two, I need to find which one has the lower potential because that's the one that's going to, it's going to be get oxidized or lose electrons. Now the lowest potential is the first one over here. So if I look at the first one, that's the one that should be losing electrons because that's the lowest potential. So to lose electrons, the reaction must go in the backward direction. It should be losing electrons. So tin should be the one that would be losing electrons to form tin 2 plus. But now we have a problem because if we select this reaction, then we should have tin. That is the one that, that should be losing electrons to form tin 2 plus. But if you look at your reactants, your reactants don't, it doesn't, they do, you, you don't have tin in your reactants. So this reaction that we have figured out does not apply to our reaction because we don't have any tin. Tin should be the one that should be losing electrons, but we don't have tin in our reactants. So what we are going to do is, because this equation does not fit with our reaction, I'm going to, I'm going to rub this equation off. So after removing that electrode, uh, again, I'm going to figure out lower potential loses electrons. So I just have one choice now. This is the lowest potential. That's the only choice left now. Uh, so lowest potential is the one that's going to lose electrons. To lose electrons, this reaction must go in the backward direction. So it's going to be tin 2 plus that would be losing electrons to form tin 4 plus. So do we have tin 2 plus in our reactants? We do have tin 2 plus in our reactants. We had I2 and we had tin 2 plus. I2 was the one that was gaining electrons to form 2I minus 1. Tin 2 plus was the one that was losing electrons to form tin 4 plus. So we have figured out our reaction for reduction, which is this one, and oxidation, which is the first reaction over here. After finding the equations for oxidation and reduction, I now move to step four, which is I need to write the overall reaction. The first thing is I need to balance the number of electrons gained and lost. So if you look at the two equations, the, uh, the reduction equation, uh, I2 is gaining two electrons, the oxidation equation, tin 2 plus is losing two electrons. So the electrons gained and lost are equal. So I don't need to do anything over there. Uh, the last step is I need to add the reactants up and the products, and I will get the overall reaction. So, so my uh, reactant in the first reaction, remember it's going in the backward direction. So my reactant is going to be tin 2 plus. So that's my first reactant, it's tin 2 plus. My reactant in the second reaction is iodine. This reaction is going in the forward direction, it's getting reduced. So the reactant is iodine. So that is my other reactant. And my products are, in the first reaction the product is tin 4 plus, that's being formed. And the second reaction, the product is I minus 1, that is being formed. So my reaction would be, uh, the products are tin 4 plus, and in the other uh, reaction, the product is 2I minus. The last thing we need to do is we need to calculate the E0 cell for this reaction, which simply is higher potential minus the lower potential or reduction potential minus the oxidation potential. So the higher potential in this case is 0.54 volts. The lower potential is 0.15 volts. So we're going to uh, take the difference, which is going to be 0.54, 0.5, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 
iodine then reacted with the product of the previous reaction which was tin 2 plus and we had another reaction and in that reaction we had tin 2 plus reacting with iodine to produce tin 4 plus so there were two steps involved in the reaction so we had two reactions first tin got converted to tin 2 plus and after that we had uh, the second reaction in which tin 2 plus further got oxidized to tin 4 plus so now what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to uh, since I had two reactions I'm going to add the two reactions together to find an overall overall reaction for this question so here now I have copied the two reactions the first reaction with tin got converted to tin 2 plus and the second reaction again with iodine with tin 2 plus further got oxidized to tin 4 plus so I'm going to write an overall reaction and I'm going to uh, add the reactants add the two reactants together so you sum up the reactants which in this case uh, there is tin SN reacting with iodine I2 and in the second reaction the reactants are tin 2 plus and that is also reacting with I2 so that's the reactants of both reactions and now I'm going to sum up the products now the products in in both cases are in the first reaction the product was tin 2 plus and it was uh, 2i minus 1 was produced and in the second reaction the the products are tin 4 plus and 2i minus 1 what you're going to notice is that tin 2 plus is common on both sides so I'm going to get rid of tin 2 plus so my overall reaction would now it would be tin plus now you have uh, two iodine so that's plus 2i2 and on the other side my product is going to be it's going to be tin 4 plus and the other 2i minus 1 is the other product but that would become total equal to 4i minus 1 so this now is my overall reaction where tin reacts with uh, it's reacting with 2i2 to produce tin 4 plus and 4i minus 1 so this now is my overall reaction I have added the two reactions together I've summed up the reactants of uh, both uh, reactions and I've summed up the products of both reactions another thing that should be mentioned is uh, that we did calculate E0 cells for the two separate reactions. for example the first uh, reaction had an E0 cell of uh, uh, 0.68 volts and the second reaction had an E0 cell of 0.39 volts now once we came up with this overall reaction when we added the two equations up the E0 cell for this reaction over here this one over here the overall E0 cell would be the sum of the E0 cells of both reactions so it would be E0 cell 1 plus E0 cell 2 which is going to be 0 0.68 volts plus you're going to add 0 0.39 volts and this would be equal to 1 point zero seven volts so for this reaction for your overall reaction the E0 cell which is going to be the sum of the two separate E0 cells you calculated and the value is going to come out to be equal to 1.07 volts